There's a popo. Hello, popo. No. Debbie's like, please don't make me talk to people. Doop doop doop. Doop doop doop. Doop doop doop. Welcome back, Remichaelers and Jaharber Hauser Berserkers, to our channel, where today we are going to be discussing all the albums we didn't talk about before, so that now we can say we did talk about all the albums that were ever created in 1990 anywhere ever. We definitely haven't forgotten any. We might have forgotten some. Sorry if we forgot your album. Which has the song, You Can't Touch This, on it. Do you guys remember when, like, Hammer, like, was a thing? The Running Man and the... The, the Pan. That song was everywhere. And now kids say that that's the music their mom listened to. His way in, he wasn't really a rapper. He was a dancer who rapped. And so it was really all about the videos and the dancing with him. I don't really even remember hearing this song a lot on the radio or anything but it like i remember hearing it in commercials and stuff especially a few years later wasn't there remember... a pepsi commercial he did a lot of that commercial stuff pepsi and burger king i just remember him being really really huge and then being gone just disappeared yeah which has go west king of wishful thinking i kind of um, love that song i do too um also has david bowie fame rock set it must have been love this is such like rom-com tunes right like 80 like 80s or like early 90s rom-com like aesthetic music. yeah but don't pretend <laughs> that you've never been in the position in your life to like be sad and then that song comes on and then you're sadder don't pretend rumin has there been a drag lip sync to it must have been love no, but that's kind of a problem. And of course, it also has Roy Orbison's Oh, Pretty Woman. Which has Let's Talk About Sex on it. You know, that song was like revolutionary. But I just remember being like in first grade and being like, did you hear what they said in that song? It was very racy for a, a, a six-year-old. Women talking about sex is something they actually enjoy. Wasn't it also about like safe sex and stuff? I think the whole point of that movement was just like, let's actually talk about sex and let's not like keep it a dirty word and just never ever address it ever. Let's talk about it. Which has personal Jesus and Enjoy the Silence on it. Both incredible songs. I feel like Depeche Mode is one of those bands that I need to get more into. Instead, I'm just into bands that are inspired by Depeche Mode that are current. <laughs> Which has Nothing Compares to You on it. This, it has the one Sinead O'Connor song we all know. This is the very, very first music video I ever remember seeing on TV. It was just her face, just her bald face. <laughs> there was also scenes of some, she was just walking, looking very lonely. Yeah, just her bald, bald, bald face. Does that mean that this is the year that she like cursed out the Pope on the Grammys or whatever? Either this year or the next, I would guess. Even though that's, that music video is so simple, she really sells it. Like, it's, it, it, she's a compelling actor with, with just her face. Although I do think it's kind of interesting that the, old, the Sinead O'Connor song that everyone knows is in fact a cover of Prince. Are there other Sinead O'Connor songs that people know? Like, was she a one-hit wonder? Do we consider her to be a one-hit wonder? I know there's a lot of people that still really love, like, whole albums of hers, but we, as a, you know, being a little bit younger, probably don't remember a lot of what was in her heyday. I mean, look, I'm the twink of the group, but even I would say that she's a one-hit wonder. I mean, can anyone here name any other Sinead O'Connor songs? I mean, we're music heads and we don't know. Erica, do you want to repeat that whole line? Because your camera went all fuzzy. But the sound came through still, and I'm going to keep it because it kind of looks cool. I think uh, Sinead is still really respected as a musician, and I know a lot of musicians who are really into her, but she didn't have any other big... Right. Problem. Yeah, I'm not saying she's objectively bad. I'm just saying that I don't think she had any other hits. Mm -hmm. Which is her first English language album and has Where Does My Heart Beat Now on it. Great album. I definitely remember hearing that on like soft rock radio uh, as a kid. She was also just 22 when it came out. It's, it's a very young age to be making such mom music. Yeah, you know, and people get down on her calling it mom music, but like she really is one of the best singers of her generation of pop 
vocalists. Not mean it is not mom music. You can you can be a good singer and make mom music. You can be a shitty singer and make mom music. But is mom music exclusionary of quality music? Can something be both mom and quality? No, yeah, we've had this conversation before. Mom music is just what moms are drawn to. Okay. Doesn't mean it's bad. Yeah. Okay. Where does my heart beat now is also one of my like sleeper faves that she sings because everybody knows like the power of love. My heart will go on, but it's not. That one's not as well known. For those who who don't know, because we've all studied music, so we get this, but to do an entire album in a language that is not your first language is really hard. And if you go back and listen to it, it's not broken English. Like Celine Dion is right on point with all the language and that's really, really hard to do. There's some songs that charted on this, but I listened to this thinking that we were gonna cover it in our albums of 90 and I don't know it just seems sort of unpolished compared to their second album so I I wasn't really blown away by it they're still obviously very talented but I think that a lot of it is the label didn't spend enough money on them to give them the studio time they needed to really polish it feels lackluster to me at the end of the day it's still an en vogue album and I'm not gonna like hate listening to excellent harmonization from a girl group but like all the big en vogue songs you know are not on this album some first albums are a big hit smash and some are a warm-up but it does make you wonder like michael said what it could have been if they had been given more time and attention and i think with pop music so much of it is about the songwriting you know most pop pop musicians don't write their own songs or they collaborate on their songs and and they're generally you know, buying songs from songwriters or licensing them. And songwriters will like withhold songs, right? And and they want they want the right artist to release their song. And so I think sometimes, you know, people don't want to give a song to a new artist that um is untested. I think it just shows that like songwriting is really where the where the ticket is. You gotta get those hits, baby. <laughs> Well, I would I would say with pop, it's songwriting and also performance. Uh, yeah. You need you need both because there are plenty of really dumb songs that are great because of a great performance. I think that's an interesting point because I think uh, uh, something that a lot of people don't understand about like when they're watching like the Grammy Awards, right, is that there's best song and there's best record, and and they're like, why are like the same songs nominated for best song and best record? Best record is for the performance of the song. Best song is for the composition and and arranging of the song. Best record is for performance, but also recording and editing and producing yeah. and mixing and mastering yeah, and yeah. all that. Yeah. Which in pop music is all part of the performance, really. This is like at a really critical juncture in hip hop history, like right before hip hop really started to be like overtaken by white producers. You can tell by the visceral reaction that records like Fight the Power and, you know, NWA's Fuck the Police and all these that really got from predominantly white news outlets and politicians. Well, yeah, and to that point, like we see MC Hammer, right? At the same time as Public Enemy and a Tribe Called Quest, right? There are three different sort of subgenres of hip hop. One has vast mass appeal, right? That got MC him a Pepsi commercial. Yeah. One got Tipper Gore to put the stamp on the CD cover <laughs> that says parental advisory. And then the other one was this like sleeper uh, underground, incredibly influential hip hop album that people still talk about. Uh, well, I mean, they still talk about the uh, about um, Public Enemy, but like uh, in a different way. Which makes me sad because musically to me, Tribe Called Quest is the most interesting. Like nothing against the other two. I enjoy some of their music too, but like listening to Tribe Called Quest is unlike listening to any other rap group, even to this day. Like it's just its own really unique combination of like jazz and hip hop and all these influences there aren't very many artists who really distinguish themselves from the mainstream music especially in i must say like modern hip-hop like in this era yeah the hip-hop is a little more distinct from me from one another but like nothing will ever sound like tribe called quest ever again this was another one that was kind of a warm-up for a really good group like really good musicians i don't think it got 
the attention it deserved, but I have also, as a big Green Day fan, I, I have gone back and listened to it, and it's it's a little meh. They hadn't really figured out who they were as a group yet, so their, their next couple albums, you really start to see who they are, and this was just, you know, it was their big opener, and it wasn't that big. Which is a dance remix album of all of, all of her existing hits, and I always think it's kind of weird to have a dance remix of an already dance song. I mean, I feel like if you were gay and in the club in 1990, and the dance remix of Straight Up Now Tell Me came on, that club would light up. <laughs> would it light up any more than if just the regular Straight Up Now Tell Me came on? I guess it depends on what time it is. If it's nine o'clock, you listen to the regular Straight Up Now Tell Me. If it's Quarter past midnight, <laughs> you listen to the other one. Okay. If that's how you want to live your life, Molly. Talk about mom music. This is maybe the mommest music of all time. This has Hold On, it has Release Me, and it has You're In Love. My mom had this on tape, and we listened to it in our Chevy conversion van, basically <laughs> all the way down to Disney World and back in 1990 or 91 when we went. Oh my goodness. Of course your family had a conversion van. <laughs> Hold on is the one where they're on the beach in their like cocktail attire <laughs> on a sunny day. <laughs> it's like the lowest budget music video of the 90s. So you know that meme that's like, What's the difference between these two pictures? They're the same picture. I think of that when I compare Wilson Phillips to like good worship music. Like if you were to, and look, I enjoy Wilson Phillips, but they're the same picture. <laughs> I like that perspective. I think that is accurate, Ramin. It's very squeaky clean music. <laughs> Can we sneak hold on into like a mega church? There's also that breakdown almost a cappella moment in Hold On where it just, it just you just get the off beats. Someday somebody's gonna make you wanna turn around and say goodbye. <laughs> and I will say something about Wilson Phillips, just that they are actually good at like harmonization and they are a well-matched ensemble. The only thing that we could mention with Wilson Phillips is the whole Nepo baby thing. Oh, are they Nepo babies? Brian Wilson's daughter. <gasps> And the, oh, I didn't know that. and the the Phillips are children of mamas and papas. Brian Wilson, as in the Beach Boys, I see them in a whole new light. Basically, everyone famous is a is a nepo baby. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, you know who isn't though? Music from the motion picture Dick Tracy, including those three songs that Sondheim wrote for her sooner or later, back in business and more. Let me propose this to you three. Is Vogue the best Madonna song? One could make a case for that, and I wouldn't argue with them. It's in the top, but I think that with a career like hers, with music that's so different across that career, I think it's kind of a silly thing to try to pick the best Madonna song. You have to rank everything, Ramin. I think the only rank thing here is your attitude, <laughs> young lady. Yay. <laughs> Uh, what I remember about this album and New Kids on the Block, though, is that, like, all the girls in my school liked New Kids on the Block, and I didn't really know anything about them. And so I said that I liked New Kids on the Block, even though I didn't really know their songs, which is another horrible confession. But yeah, there were two sets of brothers. It was Mark and Don Wahlberg, Jonathan and Jordan Knight, and then Joseph McIntyre, who had by now come into his post-puberty voice by the time they got to Step by Step. It's a hurdle for all of the uh, boy bands to get over. Look, in the first two albums, they had a soprano and he was good even back then, but then he grew up and it was like, oh, he can really sing now. I have a, what is going to be an unpopular opinion about this. I just feel like, what does New Kids on the Block do that New Edition didn't do better? Candy girl, yeah. Yeah, Bobby Brown. You want to talk about a boy soprano, there's a boy soprano. <laughs> which has Vision of Love on it. Yes! Oh. How hardcore do you have to be in, like, Mariah Lord to know this album? Well, Vision of Love is pretty big. Like, all her fans know that, because it was her baby single. And it's a good song. It holds up. I was surprised, looking through her discography, that, like, I didn't realize that all of her, her first handful of albums were, like, drip-feeding hits. There's just, like, one per album for the first, like, three. 
And well, yeah. then she blew up and had like seven per album. Yeah, but if you want to talk about like an artist who came from almost nothing, like she, no nepotism here. Like she built her way from the ground up as a backup singer. And people don't really know this about her, but she wrote all her music, not all her music, but a large portion of her music from the beginning. She wrote Vision of Love and it's great. Like, I think that Vision of Love is like an early resurgent of, you know how like the early nineties doo-wop music kind of had a weird moment. Mm -hmm. I feel like this song is one of the things that ushered that in because even when you look at like En Vogue that came out with an album this year too, they weren't quite there yet. It was more the next En Vogue album that did that. I'm sitting here giggling because Molly literally just said, I don't know her before Dream Lover. I was looking at the track list and I was so prepared to praise them for picking what they do best, which is like Italian music, some Spanish language music, but no, no, we were doing so, so well until we get to track number 13, which is a fucking West Side Story medley mashed up with a Mexican folk song. Yeah, the whole three tenor shtick was pure, pure pandering schlock. They they stood in stadiums in their tuxedos in front of microphones and sang Nassim Dorma screlting to the bleachers. And also, if you had been them and been offered the amount of money they were offered to do that, I'm sure you would have said yes. Look, I'm not saying that it's wrong, but I am saying that Placido Domingo was wrong when he oh, took absolutely. advantage of all those women. <laughs> Which is their debut album and has Groove is in the Heart on it. What an <laughs> iconic track, yeah, right? I mean, this was like the sort of the entry into like, for so many people into like 90s, like DJ, like, I don't even know what to call it, electronic music. And it really like permeated everything. And I just think of that psychedelic music video <laughs> that went along with it. Your groove, I do deeply dig. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of feel like the 90s answer to the B-52s. A little bit, right? I mean, not exactly the same genre, but definitely the same like vibe. It was the same. <laughs> sort of 60s nostalgia with the beehives and all of that kind of thing. The bass line, anytime you hear that, it's like, okay, to the dance floor. Which is his second album and has the Thunder Rolls and Friends in Low Places on it. This out that is iconic. I mean, Garth Brooks basically single-handedly brought the country music revival on. You know, because country music, like, was always sort of a niche interest. Garth Brooks was the one that made, like, do you remember that period in country music where, like, everybody was into country music? and Or maybe that was just, like, a white girl in Virginia thing. But <laughs> it was also a white girl in South Florida. There was country everywhere. But it started with Garth Brooks singing, I've got friends in low places. And with that incredible baritone voice right he's pushing I, it though he's pushing it real hard <laughs> oh totally but like here's the thing about friends in low places i don't care how you feel about country music when that song comes on you sing along you like it even you erica Hayman. you no i i don't use i don't think the thunder rolls holds up no, no at that's least terrible. At, at least not nearly <laughs> as much as friends in low places but i've never I think a, certain, heard it. A, a subset of you know people who are related to me in rome georgia like freaking love that's not <laughs> the thunder rolls <laughs> Which has Freedom 90 on it? I will, I mean, I don't know this album super well, so I don't have many thoughts on it in particular, but I will say, I think people sleep on how good of a voice George Michael had. Oh, yeah. Like if you go back and listen, he has a crazy range and he uses it well. I love George Michael, I don't love all of his music, but you can't deny even songs like Careless Whisper or Last Christmas that we make fun of now, he's the man still could sing. Like yeah, he's smoking hot too. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that uh five o'clock shadow was like the five o'clock shadow to end all five o'clock shadows. <laughs> yeah. I genuinely love almost all of his singles. I 
don't really care for almost anything that's not a single of his. That How example even... was a little extreme. Sort of like... This is his debut album, and it includes Ice Ice Baby on it. Okay, I feel, right, because we were talking about hip-hop, right? And we were talking about MC Hammer and Public Enemy and Tribe Called Quest, and now we have Vanilla Ice, and we know that hip-hop is mainstream because we have a hit single white rapper and it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. I was waiting for someone to say it because I didn't want to be the first one to say it, but yeah. It's real bad. I'm talking about him as just an interesting thing to observe when we're comparing these major hip hop artists yeah. who had major albums this year. Do y'all remember him trying to defend using the under pressure sample? It's like, no, I added an extra beat to it. Like, no, shut up. <laughs> it's also like, it also gave actual DJs who were doing really interesting thing with samples a bad name because like they were putting like eight things together and making this yeah. amazing quilt of music and he's just like I'll just use that same beat which has I'm your baby tonight I love that song it's one of my favorite Whitney Houston songs yeah. and wait a minute this album had so many good songs it has um all the man that I need Don't on it uh, my name is not Susan is from this. Maybe not her best album, but there's some good stuff on here. But I think you can make a case for this next album being this artist's best album. Because it's just all of her hits. It has Holiday, Lucky Star, Borderline, Like a Virgin, Material Girl, Crazy for You, Into the Groove, Live to Tell, Papa Don't Preach, Open Your Heart, La Isla Bonita. Wow, I stumbled on that. Like a prayer, express yourself, cherish, vogue, justify my love. <laughs> so, okay, let me make the case for a greatest hits album because I think people associate a greatest hits album with somebody who's not a serious fan. But with a pop artist where really you only want the hits, that is the, the point of a greatest hits album because like, let's talk about like how many sort of boring Madonna B-sides there are floating around out there on her actual albums. Yeah, our our review of Like a Prayer, the album, was really not that great, but the singles on it are so fucking good. And so I think, yeah, buy this album if you're going to buy a Madonna album. Yeah, and that's saying something because Like a Prayer is one of the, probably the top three Madonna albums. I mean, I have like many Madonna albums, which I know is a shocker to you, but um, this is probably the one I still play the most, even though I have like all the albums too. But you know, this way you don't have to skip to the, the yeah. songs that you don't like because you also like all of them. she made one that was like for after the nineties and it definitely wasn't as good. Molly, do you remember how we used to take shopping trips to Tyson Corner? Oh from, Erica, as from soon Shenandoah. As La Isla Bonita. I was yes. <laughs> yes. And we used to we used to rock out to this album while we were driving with Mariana to that mall. And it's just it's such a strong core yeah. memory for me in my friendship with these two women that yeah. this this album, if it weren't already amazing, <laughs> means a ton to me just for those memories. Which is just 1990 in Roman numerals AD. Does everyone remember when Gregorian chant was trendy for a while? <gasps> Yes! Is this the Gregorian Chant album? The first uh, of them. Oh, man. Moms got into Gregorian Chant. People were like, it's so soothing. It's so relaxing. And it became this huge thing. Yes, it was a whole phenomenon. You know what it's time for now? It's time for games. So Molly, first question to you. Who won best music video from the Grammys in 1990? Well, 91 Grammys music from 90. Nothing compares to you. No, Erica. Evidently something did compare. Oh shit, I know what it was. Is it, um, is it Opposites Attract? It is. Yeah. Ramin, what won best song for a motion picture or TV from this list? Sooner or later from Dick Tracy. Nope. Molly. I think it's Under the Sea from The Little Mermaid. It is. Erica, best pop performance duo group vocal. I'm a little worried about this one. It's not B-52s, it's not Righteous Brothers. Well, it could be Righteous Brothers. Linda Ronstadt and Aaron Neville. That's it? Oh, good. Well. <laughs> song, but good that you were correct. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 
For me, who won best pop vocal performance male? Okay, fine now. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to go with my first instinct here, Phil Collins. No. Molly. It's got to be Pretty Woman, Roy Orbison. It is. Best pop vocal performance female. You know, they're honestly, I'm going to struggle because this they were all so good. Um, Bette Midler from a distance. No. For me. Sinead O'Connor? No. Molly. Best pop vocal performance. Is that Lisa Stanfield's field song, the one that goes all around the world and I, I, I? Yeah. I don't think that's it. I think it's Whitney Houston. Nope. Erica. It's got to be Mariah Carey then. It is. Yeah. So that would have been her first Grammy. Yeah. Baby's first Grammy. <laughs> Ramin, best new artist. Mariah Carey. Yes. Baby's second Grammy. Molly, song of the year. You know, was it a Mariah Carey sweep that night? That's my guess. No, it was not. Uh, fuck Mariah Carey. <laughs> Erica. <laughs> Three words I thought would never come out of Ramin's mouth. I kid, I kid. I would never fuck Mariah Carey. <laughs> From a distance, Bette Midler. That's it. Yeah. Grammys like that. Wow. Ramin, what one album of the year? You know, um, I think that it was Mariah. It was not. Molly. I think it was Phil Collins. Um, no, it wasn't. Erica. Was it Wilson Phillips? It was not Wilson Phillips. Back to Ramin. Wow. No sweeps this year, huh? I'm really sorry. I'm genuinely struggling to think of who Quincy Jones is. He is really more of a producer, right? Yeah. I'm going to guess MC Hammer. Nope. Molly. Well. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the old guard. Yeah, Quincy which Jones. I'm with in the first place. Okay. Then we've got one more Grammy. Goes to Erica first, record of the year. I'm going to stay with my girl from a distance. Nope. Ramin. Straight through the night. Sorry, I'm listening to her right now. I Even if it's wrong, I'm going to keep guessing Vision of Love. No, it's not it. Molly? I don't care. I'm just, I'm kind of shocked at how there's not a sweep, which there so often is at award shows. So I'm going to go with my first instinct when this game started and say nothing compares to you, Sinead O'Connor. No, back to Erica. Ah! It's gotta be Phil Collins then. Yeah, it's, it's Phil Collins. Okay. <laughs> Starting. <laughs> Next. This is to Ramin first. So we're doing Rolling Stone first and then Pitchfork. No, no, they're the same. I combined their list. Oh, okay, okay. But also take a look at the numbering. Oh, oh. What did you do that for? A bunch of ties. Oh, this is tough this year. Public Enemy. Yes, Ramin gets seven points. Molly. Tribe Called Quest. Tribe Called Quest is number two, one of the number twos. Molly gets nine points. Erica. Sinead O'Connor, I do not want what I haven't got. That is one of the number sixes. Erica gets five points. Ramin. Neil Young. Neil Young is one of the number twos. Molly. Um, my guess is Depeche Mode. That is Molly's first no. <gasps> no Depeche Mode? Wow. If, if might be Giants is on this list, I'm quitting forever. Is it Wanted Dead or Alive? Yes. Ooh. Okay, that is one of the number fours. Ramin. I don't know why this year is so much harder than other years. There's just such a gulf between what I would pick and what I know they probably picked. That gulf will shrink as we go forward in time. Also, guess what they would pick. I'm going to go with my gut here. It probably isn't on the list, but Mariah Carey. No, that's not. Yeah. Molly. I'm sticking with my gut. It's Garth Brooks, No Fences. Nope. Well, my gut. I'm glad you guessed that because I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna guess that one. So thank you for falling on the sword instead of me, Erica. Green Day, Thirty Nine Smooth. Nope, Ramin. Again, thank you for falling on that sword for me because I was gonna guess that. Has someone guessed MC Hammer? No. MC Hammer. Nope. Molly. Brian Eno and John Cale. Yes, that's the number one. Really? Maybe I should listen to it. Erica. Whitney Houston, I'm your baby tonight. No, Ramin. They might be giants. No. Thank fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> Molly. I think it's salt and pepper. Nope. Erica. Los Lobos? That is number eight. Oh, thank goodness. I get one right. Erica gets three points. And you get what are you talking about? You get one right. You're like way in the lead. <laughs> yeah, the, the, other, the other two are out, so you get to keep going until you get one wrong. The Beavis and Butthead? Beavis Frond? <laughs> yeah, that is one of them. 
hint, if I don't know what it is and I put it on the list, that probably means it won some mm. recognition. That is a good thing to think about. I'm going to have to start taking notes during these videos. Oh, it's still my turn? Yeah, um, until, until you get one wrong. Sun City Girls? Yep. Okay. That's <laughs> one of the tens. So Molly, uh, what should we do while Eric is finishing winning this game? <laughs> because we're not going to win next round. Heart Brigade? No. The other number 10 was the Allman Brothers Band. And the other number 8 was Pixies Bossa Nova. Now we are on a new category, Best Selling Albums of 1990. This does include compilations and greatest hits and whatnot. And mom music. Yeah. Yes. So there, I added this one. <laughs> there, there's one already on there because I couldn't find any information about it. I'm guessing it's a Bollywood movie soundtrack, but I, I Googled it and I couldn't find anything. Ramin, what do you think sold well? Paula Abdul. No, Molly. Sinead O'Connor. No, Erica. New Kids on the Block, Step by Step. Yes, that's number two. Mm -hmm. Should have thought of that. They were in all the magazines and all the radio stations. They had huge marketing. I should have thought of that too. Remain. Just because she's such a hit maker, I'm going to guess Madonna Immaculate Collection. Yes, that is number one. Hey! Yeah, that's what that should have been the guess. Uh, now you know, I'm only three points behind and not 13. Now that it's my turn again, I'm going to make a risky guess. I think it's the three fucking tenors. Yes, they were number 10. I was about to say, that's a good guess. Erica. I'm going to go Wanted Dead or Alive again. No, for me. Uh, Whitney Houston. Yes, that's number seven. Okay, so uh, this should have been my first guess, and I don't know why I didn't think of it till now. It's Garth Brooks, No Fences. It's Garth Brooks, No Fences. Mm hmm That was number three. Yeah. I see Pete Whitney. Number three album, the number three album of the year in album sales. Y'all, that album was enormous. Erica? Pretty Woman soundtrack. That is a no for me. MC Hammer. Yes. That was number four. He's coming for you, Garth Brooks. I don't think it could have been as controversial as it was if it wasn't also huge. And so I'm going to say public enemy fear of a black planet. Nope. Erica. Vanilla Ice to the extreme. That's also a no. Remain. Again, I know who I want it to be, but that doesn't mean that's who it was. Uh, Mariah Carey. That is on the list. Oh. Yay, come back. Don't call it a comeback. She's number five. Rumi gets six more points. Molly. George Michael. That's a no. Uh, Molly and Erica are out, so we have to wait for Rumi to run the board. <laughs> um, Phil Collins. Yes, that's number eight. Oh my God, I might actually have a hope. And there's one more question after this too. Wilson Phillips. No. Got one more mistake to make, though. Oh, the bottom of the list is way harder than the top of the list. Depeche Mode. And that's it. Okay, so the rest of the list, the, the only one missing, number nine, is that chant album. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Hard mode, starting with Molly. Billboard. Uh, the Billboard Hot 100. It's always the are hardest these, one. Are these songs or albums? Songs. And all of them are here on the right. So the top 20 are on the right. We need to find the top 10. I think based on some of our previous conversations that number one is How Am I Supposed to Live Without You by Michael Bolton. It is not. Nothing compares to you has to be on there. It is. That is number three for me. I feel like I would have to give up my gay card if I didn't guess Madonna Vogue. That is on the list. Oh, Vogue is on there? God damn it. I scanned the list too quickly. Apparently it doesn't compare to Sinead O'Connor though because she beat it. Yeah, mm -hmm. to Molly. Remember, Madonna was controversial. Paula Abdul opposite the tract. No, Erica. It must have been love, but it's over now. That is number two. Wow! The power of mom music. My answer is Hold On by Wilson Phillips. Yes, that. No. Number, number one? one? Oh, Molly was right. This is the year of the mom rock. Mm. It gets progressively less mommy the longer you go <laughs> on the list. Okay, I might be wrong. This song might be too black, but I think it's that girl is poison. That's number four. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Erica. John Bon Jovi, Blaze of Glory. That is on the list. Yay. It's number 10. Mariah Carey. I'm just going to be the person to guess Mariah Carey in all these rounds. <laughs> 
but she's on the list. Okay. At I'm gonna just steal all my guesses, Ramin. Molly. Technotronic pump up the jam. No, Molly's out. This is neck and neck. We're a point apart. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The other, the other hold on from En Vogue. Yep. That is number eight. Uh, my guess is Phil Collins. Phil Collins is a yes. That is number seven. Four points for Ramin. Oh, Five. shit. Oh, shit. Whoever gets the next one wins. Yeah, whoever gets this wins. Erica, you first. Billy Idol, Cradle of Love. That's it. <laughs> Looking at these lists, what observations are we making? So other than it's very mom rock at the top. It does, it does seem to be a very corny year. Best selling is appealing to kids. And moms. And moms. I think it's funny that Rolling Stone and Pitchfork only agreed on Brian Eno and John Cale. That was yeah. neither of their number one. Their number ones were Tribe Called Quest and Neil Young. Their number twos were Public Enemy and so on. So like, it's th that's the only album that they agreed on. The rest were all their ones, twos, threes, fours, and so on. And even in those disagreements, like you could say, well, they're split in hairs, but no, like Tribe Called Quest and Neil Young are worlds apart. Sinead O'Connor and Beavis and Butthead or whatever the fuck they, I'm sorry to Bevis Frond, Beavis Frond, I'm sorry that you picked a weird name to say, but worlds apart. Yeah. But it's hard to like it, compare, you know, things that are, it's easier to compare similar things than dissimilar things, right? So to say who had a better album, Neil Young or A Tribe Called Quest, like how do you even quantify that? Um, yeah, I'm called Quest. <laughs> <laughs> one but... of them asked me whether they could kick it. <laughs> one did not. <laughs> and also like we talked about the Grammys didn't have any kind of sweep that you could point to. Like the Grammy voters were all over the place. Hmm. And they tend to be pretty monolithic, I think. This makes sense if you think about, you know, the albums that we looked through, Molly, and like we weren't really too excited about any of them. And I think the excitement in popular music comes in 1991. Yeah. And it and it doesn't even really take off right away in 1991. It take, doesn't take off until 92. But suddenly there is a new style of music that all the cool kids are into tune in next time <laughs> yeah. thanks everybody for watching let us know what you think if there's anything that we missed fill us in on stuff we don't know about because there's plenty that we don't know about give the video a like if you liked it give it a pity like if you didn't like it uh follow the channel if you're interested in more of us talking about stuff you know all that normal stuff and maintain your groovy selves <laughs> <laughs>